There are strong arguments for and against vaccine passports and mandatory vaccination for healthcare workers. Reasonable people can disagree. But a debate in the Commons on the measures also brought some pretty unreasonable Tories out of the woodwork. This was the intervention from Desmond Swain. We decide what our risk appetite is and what we're prepared to encounter and what we're prepared to not. Notwithstanding the carnage on our roads, certainly killing more people than COVID at the moment, some of us still decide to drive. It's a matter of opinion. So it comes down to letting loose the dogs of war. Get the fear factor into it. Get the members of the officials, the members of SAGE, the members of Independent SAGE, of Spy M, all those, of course, speaking in their own private capacity, get them out there twisting the fear lever. What about the, um, in the, the uh, Health Protection Agency? What, what Stalinist minds thought up that nomenclature? Get them out there twisting the fear button And by and large, you will get the reaction that you want. People will crave more enforcement and more fiercer measures to protect them from this great danger that is out there. I mean, I hope Desmond Swain doesn't have COVID-19 because you could almost see the the aerosols sort of flying out of his mouth all all across the room. He speaks with such, um, you know, drama. Anyway, Stalinist nomenclature. So the, the content of what he was saying also completely bizarre, completely ridiculous. And as Byline Times' Adam Bienkov pointed out yesterday, um, it was also pretty misleading. Wrong, in fact. Uh, Adam Bienkov tweeted, Conservative MP Desmond Swain says the carnage on UK roads is certainly killing more people than COVID at the moment. Um, And for context, there were just 1,460 deaths on British roads in the whole of 2020, compared to more than 4,000 deaths of people with COVID last month alone, which sort of puts into into context his his comments about facts and opinion this is all opinion well no that 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 was facts that the facts are that more people have died of covid in a month than died on britain's roads in a year um it's interesting though i always find this interesting how many people on the right have this idea that all public health experts are desperately gagging for for lockdowns and that's because it kind of goes against what we've seen over the past year. We know that at the start of this pandemic, they resisted lockdowns for ages, too long in fact. And Chris Whitty is always talking about balancing the pros and cons of of intervention. He doesn't strike me as someone who is obsessed with lockdowns. He actually seems like he's got quite a balanced perspective on these things. Oh, no, absolutely. And the thing about how the like scientists and public health is being pitted as a sort of pro-lockdown force is ridiculous. As we just talked about in the previous segment, the whole point of wanting a swifter lockdown is so that the lockdown is a lockdown that if if it's in a situ- if we're in a situation where it's clear that at some point some kind of lockdown is going to happen, because for example, we have a variant that is incredibly transmissible, what we want to do is make it as short and as unrestrictive as possible. Because lockdowns are awful and no one wants to be in them. No one wants to repeat what happened last year where we were all stuck in our houses for two months or six weeks or whatever. That's awful. If we're going to have to do it, we want it to be short, as not invasive as possible, where we can still, you know, maybe mix with one other household or have, you know, some kind of mobility, some kind of freedom still. And by having it at the right time, we prevent those really horrible ones further down the road. But in terms of the uh, that where do we where does this conspiratorial idea about scientists come from? I think it's not so much about what people are hearing from the mouths of scientists necessarily. I think it's a general relationship to what people perceive as the establishment. Uh, you know, I think it comes from because I, I while I think you know the conspiratorial stuff obviously in ter- in terms of mainstream politics we do hear it more from the right than we do from the left but i do think that there are a lot of people who might be inclined to towards these conspiracy theories who might not necessarily identify politically one way or the other uh, and i think that comes from a fracturing of what people are being told particularly by their government what people are being told is their reality and what people are experiencing on the ground as their reality. That fracture is kind of the gap through which a lot of dangerous conspiracy theories emerge. And, you know, I don't, because I don't blame people 
for finding it weird that like some forms of medical treatment seem to take ages to develop and become accessible or never become accessible. And yet this vaccine was developed and distributed so quickly. I don't blame people for finding it weird that at certain points last year, we were being told you can't mix indoors or go and visit your mom or visit your dad or visit your your relatives or friends, but you can, you have to go to work and go on public transport. Obviously, you know, you and I have an explanation for those things that are grounded in reality. Things like the layers of bureaucracy and profiteering that tend to slow down the accessibility and distribution of healthcare. Things like the fact that our government sees us not being able to see our loved ones as kind of disposable, but us going into the office every day is something that, you know, is a last resort. They care much more about that than they do about us being able to spend time with our loved ones. But that gap without those explanations, I think it becomes a kind of breeding ground for a lot of really dangerous thinking. You know, I think the same way about climate skepticism and and the whole emergence of skepticism and about about climate change. On the one hand, of course, we believe what it, it's clear the evidence is, is unequivocal. But on the other hand, you can't blame people for finding it strange that they're being told to recycle or they're being told to buy better light bulbs while the government is still commissioning new coal, coal mines. Like, it's not an unreasonable question. And the problem is that when you don't have analysis and theories and, and a way of explaining to people in a way that's grounded in reality what happens, it leaves open the door for conspiracy, conspiracy theories and going off the deep end in a way that becomes really, really hard to reverse and has really detrimental consequences, as we've seen both in the case of climate change but also in the case of, of coronavirus as well. I think in particular with, with Desmond Swain, I just think it, it displays, and, and lots of people like him, so Dan Wooten on GB News is exactly the same. It displays just a real unseriousness about following what scientists are actually saying. Because sometimes I do, I do listen to some scientists and I think, to be honest, I think you're being a bit too trigger happy about restrictions. For example, I think at this point in time when we have vaccines, zero COVID to me seems like it, it would involve you know, more restrictions than than are worth it, given given what the vaccines have, have enabled us to do to lower the risk of this disease. But that's not the mainstream position within sort of the scientific community, and especially not the scientific community who are advising the government. Desmond Swain is arguing against policies which are written up by a government that's actually incredibly resistant to to restrictions. And and Desmond Swain, this idea that just sort of like all scientists want to control us. So therefore, let's just pick numbers out of the air and suggest that there are more people dying in cars than are currently dying of COVID. It's just like you've been elected to, to quite an important body. You're getting paid 60 grand a year. Like do some research before you make a speech in there, you know, and maybe think seriously about an issue before you use your your vote. You could make a serious libertarian argument against lockdowns. I, I tend to not find them particularly persuasive, but but Desmond Swain and you know his coterie of of, of right wing nut jobs essentially at the, on the backbench of the Tories, they are they are not capable of making them 